Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're plunging into something that's really got the tech community talking, sysadmins, home lab folks, pretty much everyone in that space. Yeah, it's pleasant. We're talking about the Proxmox VE 9.0 beta. We've sifted through community comments, blog posts, all the tech details, mm -hmm. and our mission today, really unpack the big new features, especially around storage, and figure out why people are calling this release a potential game changer for managing virtual setups. And that's uh, that's spot on. Proxmox VE, I mean, it's always been this really powerful open source virtualization platform, right? Mm -hmm. But this 9.0 beta, it feels like they're directly addressing some, well, some longstanding frustrations users have had especially with storage. Yeah, storage seems key. It's really about giving you, the user, whether you're tinkering at home or running serious enterprise stuff, more power and flexibility with your setup. Okay, let's unpack this then. Yeah. And we have to start with the headliner, the one everyone's talking about. Excellent. That's the integration of ZFS 2.3.3. Yeah. And finally, RAID Z expansion. I mean, this has been on wish lists forever, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Forever is uh, probably not an exaggeration for some people. It hits a pain point that's, well, it's haunted ZFS users for years. And that pain point, just to remind everyone, was basically if your raid -Z pool filled up, expanding it was a nightmare. Mm -hmm, total nightmare. You either had to replace every single drive with a bigger one or add a whole new set of drives, a new VDEV, mm. which usually meant buying, what, three, four, five drives at once? Exactly. Not cheap and not always practical. The community feedback on this was, well, pretty vocal. We saw one person saying they'd been waiting since 2012 when I built my very own NAS. Wow, 2012. Yeah. And another one joked they'd been waiting since the launch of magnetic storage was invented. Okay, so maybe a slight exaggeration there, but it shows the desperation. It really does. And so the breakthrough here, the big news, is that RAID Z expansion lets you add just a single drive to your existing RAID Z pool. One drive. One drive and critically without downtime. So you can increase your capacity without that massive disruptive overhaul. Right, so that example you mentioned earlier, a five wide RAID Z2 pool, maybe eight TB drives. Yeah, exactly. Let's say you've got that five drives in RAID Z2. Before you run out of space, your options were swap all five for say 12 TB drives ah. or add another five eight TB drives as a new VDEV. Expensive either way. Very, now you can just slot in a sixth 8 TB drive, boom, your five wide pool becomes a six wide pool, more mm -hmm. space, minimal fuss. Like that user said, this feature allows you to expand an existing array by adding a disk. That's the gist. Simple yeah. as that. Okay, simple in concept. But let's talk about the uh, the catch that got people talking. The expansion itself doesn't automatically rebalance the existing data across the new geometry, right? That's correct. That's the nuance here. So using your example, the old data on the original five drives still uses the old three data to parity ratio. Exactly. Well, any new data written after you add the sixth drive will use the new four data to parity ratio. Which means you might get slightly less usable space overall than if you'd built a six wide pool from scratch. And yeah, we saw some users react to that, like the one who said, sadly can't see myself using it due to this. Mm -hmm. So is this a major drawback? I wouldn't call it a major drawback, more like a characteristic you need to understand. It's a design choice, right? They prioritize allowing immediate non-disruptive capacity increase. The data is safe. The pool is bigger. Okay. And the community, being resourceful, immediately jumped on this. People pointed out, hey, there are ways to handle this if you really want that perfect balance eventually. Like what? Well, there's the ZSS rewrite subcommand that's part of ZFS itself. And people have developed scripts like ZSS bin place rebalancing. These tools can, over time, rewrite the data to use the new wider parity layout. Okay. As one commenter put it quite clearly, there are easy methods you can rewrite the data to compensate. So it's not like you're stuck forever. You get the immediate benefit and you have options later if you want to optimize fully. That makes sense. It's a trade-off for immediate flexibility. And the impact is still huge, right? Mm -hmm. TrueNAS Scale already put this in their 24.10Z release. Mm -hmm. They did, which helps validate it. And now Proxmox bringing it in makes it available to this massive virtualization user base. It feels like a massive win, especially for home labbers. We saw that comment, I can only afford 2 by 18 d drives at the moment with plans to expand in the future. Exactly. For that person, this isn't a minor tweak. It's fundamental. It makes scaling affordable and practical. They can start small and grow one disk at a time. That's huge. It really is. It changes the whole calculus of building out storage. Okay, so moving on from ZFS, but staying with storage, mm -hmm. another feature getting a lot of applause. Yes, the LVM snapshots. Snapshots for thick provisioned LVM shared storage. 
This sounds a bit niche, but potentially massive for certain setups. It is. It targets a specific but important group, people using SANs. Right. Storage area networks. Yeah. So the old way, if you used a SAN with Proxmox, you often used shared LVM. Good performance, short I.O. path. Yeah, that was the benefit. But the massive downside was no snapshot support, which is, I mean, critical for backups, for rollbacks, basic stuff these days. Absolutely critical. Lack of snapshots was a major blocker for many. So this new feature adds that snapshot capability directly to shared LVM via ISCSI or fiber channel. That's exactly it. You can now take a snapshot of a thick provisioned LVM volume on shared storage. You persist the state of that virtual disk, and then you can even create a new volume based off that snapshot. Wow. Okay. The community reaction must have been strong on this one. Oh, yeah. We saw comments like snapshots for thick provisioned LVM shared storage is a huge thing, and specifically calling out people with existing VMware hardware and SANs. Because they couldn't easily migrate those setups before. Precisely. Another user said flat out, this is what was stopping me from migrating a few Hyper-V and ESXA clusters with existing SANs. It just removed a massive roadblock. So for those folks who were maybe stuck using complex workarounds before, what did they have to do? Well, if you wanted something like snapshots on shared LVM, you had to jump through hoops. People were using things like cluster file systems, uh, GFS2 or OCFS, and then putting COW2 disk image files on top of that. Oof, sounds complicated and probably adds overhead. Exactly. More layers, more complexity, potential performance hits. This new native snapshot support, it just strips all that away. It makes things dramatically simpler. Which really does make that VMware Proxmox move a much easier and better deal, as someone put it. It really does, especially for enterprises. Think about it. Companies have invested sometimes heavily in SAN hardware. Very expensive gear. Yeah, SANs aren't cheap. And this feature lets them reuse all that very expensive SAN hardware, as one commenter emphasized, without sacrificing a key modern feature like snapshots. Plus, they still get that potentially shorter I.O. path compared to something like VMware's VMFS. That's a pretty compelling combination. No wonder that user joked, I'm going to have to stay seated for a little while. This has me so happy. Yeah, you can feel the relief and excitement there. It's a major win for that whole segment using SANs. Okay, so storage is clearly the star. But the 9.0 beta isn't just about storage, right? There are other significant things happening. Definitely. We should talk about the networking side, too. Right, the software-defined networking, the SDN fabrics. This sounds pretty advanced. What does this unlock? It unlocks a lot more flexibility and sophistication in how you design your virtual networks within Proxmox. It moves beyond simple bridges and bonds. So more complex setups. Yeah. Think about building things like two-layer spine leaf architectures, which you see in larger data centers, or maybe full mesh networks, particularly useful if you're running something like a Ceph cluster, where a low latency between all nodes is important. So Ceph users might like this. Potentially, yeah especially for larger Ceph deployments. One user mentioned excitement about using it for building 10G mesh networks. And they also noted how affordable things like 40 gig switches and NICs are becoming now. Ah, because of the big cloud providers upgrading. Exactly. Azure's data center refits are apparently flooding the secondhand market with high-speed gear. So SDN features arriving now means people can actually build these advanced topologies more affordably. Interesting timing. Mm -hmm. And beyond SDN, there were mentions of just general GUI and API improvements. Yes, countless was the word used in the notes, though maybe a slight overstatement. But yeah, lots of smaller refinements. The Proxmox UI generally gets good marks. People seem to like it. One user said, the UI is really solid IMO. But there's always room for improvement, I guess. Always. The community had suggestions. Things like uh, making the UI more mobile friendly, customizing default values when you create a VM, like setting default CPU cores, RAM, disk size. Oh, that would be handy. Save some clicks. Yeah. And better GUI support for setting up bind mounts and LXC containers. Little quality of life things. And of course, someone always wants more buttons and knobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always that user. <laughs> okay. So lots of good stuff. But it is a beta. We need the reality check. Where did the community feel maybe things could go further? Or what are the lingering sore spots? Right. Beta means work in progress. And yeah, high availability or HA came up. It seems like it's still a bit tricky, especially if you're using resource mappings like PCI pass-through or USB pass-through. Those can cause migrations to fail. They can, yeah. Live migration might fail, and the HA handling might not be as smooth as people want. We saw that direct question. Why there is no option to enable HA to shut down, migrate, and start VM. People want more robustness there. 
Gotcha. What else? Load balancing. Ah, uh, yeah, that came up too. Some disappointment that there isn't a built-in equivalent to VMware's DRS dynamic resource scheduler. You know, automatically balancing VM workloads across hosts. Right. Someone said, I was really hoping for a DRS equivalent in 9.x. So still relying on manual balancing or third-party tools for that. Seems so for now. And another interesting point was network interface naming during upgrades. Oh, what's the issue there? Apparently, sometimes network interface names can change unexpectedly after an upgrade, which can break configurations, obviously. This seemed particularly noted by people coming from VMware or Hyper-V, where it's apparently less of an issue. Is there a fix? Proxmox does have a tool to pin interface names to try and keep them consistent, but the feedback was kind of like, pinning should be by design, not an optional thing you have to remember to do. Fair point. So some rough edges still, which is totally normal for a beta. Absolutely. It's why they release betas to get this exact kind of feedback. It shows where refinement is still needed. Okay, so let's zoom out. The bigger picture. Proxmox VE 9.0 beta. It's built on Debian 13, Trixie, New kernel, 6.1.8, QEMU 10, LXC 6. Solid foundation. Very solid, yeah. Up-to-date components across the board. And connecting it all together, what's the main takeaway here? What does this beta really signify? I think it signifies Proxmox really listening and tackling those major long-standing pain points, especially in storage. The ZFS expansion, the LVM snapshots, these aren't just minor features. They fundamentally change how you can architect and scale your storage with Proxmox. Making it a more serious contender, maybe, for people who might have dismissed it before. I think so. For home labbers, it makes scaling way more accessible. For enterprises, especially those with SANS or those considering leaving VMware or Hyper-V, it removes major objections and offers compelling features. And we have some confidence in these new storage features. They're not totally experimental. Right. That's important. The ZFS RAID Z expansion code, as we mentioned, has been out there, tested in trueness. It's not brand new code appearing out of nowhere. Okay, good. And the LVM snapshot feature uses techniques like volume chaining, which isn't revolutionary in itself. It's a known method used in other virtualization platforms to maintain performance during snapshots. So it's building on established concepts. It really sounds like the community is fired up. People planning weekend testing, dusting off servers. Yeah, that comment, oh, once again, a weekend, I'll have to spend behind a screen. But you could almost hear the smile behind it. Uh -huh, exactly. The happy kind of screen time. It's that excitement of getting your hands on new capabilities that really solve problems you've had. And again, for anyone looking at moving from VMware or Hyper-V, the value proposition here, especially with these storage features, just got a whole lot stronger. You're getting features that rival the big proprietary players, often at zero software cost. Looking forward, then, it's still beta. Community feedback is going to be key now, shaping the final release. Maybe we'll see further tweaks, maybe progress on things like ARM64 support or that load balancing wish down the road. That's the hope, right? The open source process relies on that feedback loop. But even as a beta, it's a really strong statement from Proxmox about their commitment to delivering powerful, flexible, and cost-effective tools. So the message seems clear. Whether you're that home labber tinkering away or you're an admin managing a serious cluster, possibly with a sand. Proxmox 9.0 beta is worth a look. It's inviting you to try out these new storage possibilities. Head over to the downloads page, grab the beta, spin up a test server. Join the adventure, yeah. See how it works for your setup. It definitely sounds like a ride worth taking. Which leaves us with a final thought to ponder. What does this relentless innovation we see in open source platforms like Proxmox actually mean for the future of the big proprietary players? How might this continue to reshape IT infrastructure, not just for big companies, but for everyone, right down to the individual enthusiast? That's the big question, isn't it? The landscape is definitely shifting. 